All week, we've been following developing news out of the border and another big day today where more migrants have been let into the United States through the Rio Grande Valley, uh, this time 100. BorderReport.com, South Texas correspondent Sandra Sanchez joins us now live. Sandra, you were there when the bus took these migrants into the United States. How was that? Right, uh, they're bringing them in batches and 104 more people today are crossing. I saw a group of about 25 that came, all ages, children to senior citizens, um, led by Sister Norma Pimentel of Catholic Charities of the United, of, of the Rio Grande Valley. And um, you know, it, it's already increased fourfold from yesterday when they brought 27 people across and we're hearing that Next Wednesday, they could have 200 people come across. Um, those, there's only one family that doesn't have a sponsor, and they're actually looking for a sponsor, but everyone else had families or people to go to who had provided their transportation. I met up with them. They were waiting at the bus stop. They wait for about 12 hours. They've already been screened for coronavirus, so they don't want to leave the confines of the bus station. Um, but they were all super excited eating food. The kids were playing with toys, and um, they were just excited to be in the United States. Now, just to be clear, these people still have to report to an immigration court when they're given that data, right? They absolutely do. It, they're issued a notice to appear. We've talked about this. They promise to go to any and all court hearings and uh, whatever city they end up. And if they don't, they're subject to immediate expulsion. Um, you know, if you compare what happened this week to 30 days ago, it has been transformational here in the Rio Grande Valley because 30 days ago, we did not have Border Patrol agents allowing those to, uh, to with young children to uh, be released with these NTAs, with these notice to appears. So they were automatically expelling everyone and anyone who crossed in between a legal port of entry or, or didn't have documents. Now, fast forward, we not only have hundreds of people a day that are being released with these young children, but we now have uh, 100 people today that were MPPs right here and, and just as we speak, um, El Paso is expected to receive its first 25 migrants from Tijuana. I'm sorry, from Juarez. And this is an ongoing issue. Now, these people are seeking asylum, um, and there was a lot of children that you saw out there, right? There, it's mainly children and families. Yes, it is. Uh, it, different from what you exposed this week, you had a fabulous story on stash houses. And, and you know, you can explain better than I about what you saw and how those people are not necessarily eligible for release, right? Right, so the people that you're seeing are families, their children, they're actively presenting themselves to immigration officials, to Customs and Border Protection personnel, asking for asylum to enter the country. What I saw was completely different. What I saw it was the majority were men and they were hiding, so they don't want to be caught. They don't want to present themselves to agents and they're hiding in these homes and they're paying smuggling fees. So they're paying a, a cartel organization to give them money, to give them food, a place to stay, and then eventually Pass them past the checkpoints, the Falfurias, Kingsville, Sarita, whichever checkpoints they're going, Laredo, and go up north to their destination without ever being caught. So the people you're seeing, they do have numbers, they are processed, they're given some sort of identification and a notice to appear. These people in the stash houses, they're not. They're just going through the system unnoticed, unfiltered, so completely different than these. Um, Wednesday night, south of Mission, 130 of these women and children and, and some gentlemen also just turned themselves in, uh, in an area where back in 2018 and 2019 we saw a lot of activity with the migrants. Um, as far as the stash houses that you're talking about, but what we're overall seeing is there's a tremendous rush on the border, despite what the Biden administration is saying, do not rush the border. I'm hearing from my colleagues in San Diego and in El Paso that people are congregating on the border, and it seems that they are in Tamaulipas as well because they want to come across. Um, one thing that we are going to continue to watch is what Congress does with this, because the Biden administration has put basically a 100-day halt on a number of immigration policies implemented by the Trump administration, but it's going to take Congress to act. Um, there is an, an immigration bill that Biden has put forward, but Congress is going to have to make it the law of the land or, and make these changes permanent. So, you know, I lived in Washington, D.C. in the late 1980s, and I remember when everyone was pushing for amnesty. It didn't happen then. We'll all be watching and seeing if Washington really hears and connects with what's happening here in South Texas and West Texas and Southern California now and, and actually does some changes. Absolutely. It's something that will be very fluid and we're going to have to focus and see that. I mean, Joe Biden is in Texas today in Houston for the winter storms. It's possible that he might have to plan another trip to Texas, but maybe down here on the border or in El Paso, Laredo to see what's actually happening and out here, especially since we're seeing, like you said, a huge increase in these people coming across the border.
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sandra. If you'd like to know more about Sandra's stories here on the border, you can always go to valleycentral.com or borderreport.com for the very latest. Like Sandra said, developing story, and it's going to be continuing next week, so we will get more context then. Thank you so much.